What is up, guys? Welcome back, second week in a row for the uh, we're gonna call it the J Heaven podcast. You might hear me say it as J Haven a lot because my English sucks. Because I have a I don't know, I have a lot of spit in my mouth or something like that. Um, it's me, Cloud Seven Heaven, and we got your boy JD. Oh, dude, we should really do it. <laughs> we should, like, wait a minute. Wait, it's, we start next to each other. We yeah, start, we start yeah. next to each other. If you should... Ah, yeah, I mean, we're sitting right, no, down. No, I'm no, half your face. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hold on. I'm Hold serious. on. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> you, okay, anyway. All right. <laughs> Got that kicked uh, off. What's going on, JD? I don't know, man. What are you playing? What you been playing this week? So, uh, I've gotten no further in Sekiro since the last time that we talked. Um, so that's unfortunate. Final Fantasy VII just got past the train yard. Um, and then uh, Epic Seven, uh, the mobile game that I actually kind of like dinged a little bit last week, is actually getting a Guilty Gear collab. So, been grinding fodder for that. And then uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, classic. Uh, just got some new characters in it that are the there. It's a bunny girl um, and an egg seeker chick. Uh, they are amazing. They're meta defining. But what about you, man? <laughs> They're meta defining. Hold on. Uh, when's the Guilty Gear thing come out? Guilty Gear comes out Wednesday. So so bad. I mean, we could chat about it. So bad guy is the free character you get. Dizzy and Biken are the five star base characters, and then I know uh, will be no. Eno will be I know. Uh, will be the artifact like her so I don't know we, so we have no idea what, pardon me so she'd be the best no she's the artifact she's uh, not a character you kit her visuals her aesthetics will be placed on a card that you can use on a character so we know nothing about their abilities their animations obviously uh, biking is a biking and dizzy are five-star bases which is I mean the physics on them so does that mean no one's going to be using Soul at all? Because no, everyone gets. Yeah, them. honestly, no. Soul will be there for the high tier content. Will be there for no one, but for the people that are downloading the game because they love Guilty Gear are going to love the shit out of it. But who knows? Uh, Epic Seven is a game that uh, any character is viable. Uh, equi- it's an equipment based game, so fun stuff. What about you? What well, do you play, man? I'll, I'll watch your stream if that comes. <laughs> Um, uh, what am I playing? Um, uh, Unist, practicing on Unist a lot. Um, losing a lot. I actually get a lot of hate mail on Unist. Um, more, yeah, right? Uh, like, what hate the mail. hell? Yeah, I had a guy, it was like my, my second match. <clears throat> I play Akatsuki, um, and he's like, he's one of the few characters, uh, is he the only character that isn't a weapon or doesn't actually have a weapon? I could be wrong. I gotta look that up. But he has, like, electric, like, when he punches and stuff, he's, like, very, like, traditional karate-oriented, like, sort of style. Um, I fought this guy, who also played Akatsuki, and it was, like, my second match, and I, I lost, like, pretty bad, honestly. And then he sends me a message, and he's like, he's like, wow, you know, is this your first time playing him? And my points aren't showing that it's my first time, so, duh, that's a stupid question. But he's like, is this your first time playing him? It's like, you know, do you need some help with that? And I was just like, do you message all your mirrors or am I just lucky? Like, seriously, dude, like, go the fuck away. And then I played uh, Dead or Alive, of course, and that's even worse. Like, people were just assholes on Dead or Alive, but it's it's the community. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, and then uh, The Witcher. I'm still trying to beat The Witcher. So. Three? Yeah, I have the DLC. I'm pretty much at the end of the game. I've just oh, been doing the DLC. God, it's such a good game. <clears throat> you know... We should let's talk offline about that. Not to say it's a bad game. It's just like when I was running through it, I was just like, parts of me are going, why am I still playing this? Why are we still here? You know. Maybe for you. Oh uh, yeah, we could talk about that a different time. But maybe your second yeah. playthrough kind of shed some of the. You kind of oh, you turn. Oh, it's the, my the, first playthrough. The, I haven't beaten it. You've never beat. Oh, never mind then. I've not. Whole, that's a whole, whole day's worth of conversation. <laughs> but um, outside of that, uh, yeah. So, um, Zach Cloud, this one in particular uh had some uh responses or comments on discord we figured hey you know what it's probably a good idea to at least respond to a couple of these maybe have a little bit of a discussion about them um 
And of course, in the comment section, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, of course, leave it down there and we'll answer them. Unless we've already answered them, then we'll have to be like, hey man, check out video 64. That's where your answer's at. What a gamer. <laughs> you, of course you chose a, a number of a console. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> check out video 16 or 32. Oh. 69. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, first question is, um, what game did you have the most fun playing? Now, I feel like we should reel that in. I mean, we can spray it out if you want to, but I, I kind of feel like that's a lot of um. Uh, mm. So well, let's let, talk let... about define that like from i know the question came from the discord so you could say of all time or would you say like of the past like two years i mean of all time is quick um so if i were to caveat that it'd be final fantasy tactics even though i don't play it a lot it's like yeah. a game that i ever play over and over and over and over final fantasy tactics would take the cream of the crop more than seven maybe final fantasy four because that was my first game but what about you tactics i'm just i'm blown away um game i had the most fun playing was probably uh not sealed republic 2 um because that was my first one i ever played yeah. i didn't play the first uh kotor first because someone spoiled it to me remember our web publishing class yeah. um it was this tall black dude who was just like hey you want me to spoil this for you and i was just like bro i got an xbox i can get this game <laughs> like chill relax i already spoiled it i was like yeah whatever and I was playing through the second one, and I remember just being... Obviously, the first one's better from a story uh, standpoint, but the second one has better mechanics, uh, gameplay-wise, more force powers that you can use, more animations on like combat and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just liked it better. Yeah. It worked out better for me. Um, but I would say of... So I want to reel it in uh, <laughs> and talk about the game I had the most fun playing. What about last year? Do you have a game? And it can't be a mobile game. Because I feel like that might be easy for you. I want you to <laughs> really because the amount think of mobile games something. I play. Um, yeah, you go first. Yeah, uh, you go first if you don't mind. Because I'm trying to. Uh, unfortunately, man, like a, a lot of the years kind of just fade in together for what game I think is the best or that I enjoy playing. Because mm. I had so many games I love playing. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, last year was actually uh, Diablo 2. Because I think. Caveat. Wow. <laughs> we probably spent what? What was the first day oh my that we spent God, on dude, it? We were all oh, bad. Like I think we got to hours. the third act, and we're on <laughs> hardcore. Like it's not like oh, it's not the third act. It. Yeah, it, it's like all right, this last mission. Oh, all right, ready? To go to the next act. And dude, nothing out. is sweeter than hearing you than than I didn't have to go, but you did, and I was like, just one more, and you're like, one more act. Oh, it's so satisfying. It's like <laughs> it's rejuvenating, dude. Yeah, it's like I get a pause on time and I get to be in the moment. Oh, it's a guilty man. pleasure. Uh, Diablo two. Well, why? So why? Why was it? Why was it your favorite? So, you know, you took so much time away from, you know, playing that game and to come back to it, and then obviously there were changes, right? Like when I, the last time I played it, I didn't play online, so the necromancer sucked because there was no patches for him. Um, Pretty much at, you always died because i didn't know how to build a character and you know specialties and all that stuff i mean not to say diablo is like in-depth character building let's be honest like all right put in as much strength as you can uh dexterity as you can use the rest goes to vitality that's it for everybody really um but at the same time going back to it and playing it again if we had a like a committed group of like six or seven people that would probably be the most fun i've ever had just running yeah. up and down clearing tombs of tall rush and stuff which act two is my favorite act so when we got to act two i was like all right and then i realized how much i hate act three yeah act <laughs> three is the bane of my existence Fuck, act five is the best though act five is my favorite what that feels so, i at that point i feel so godlike do you like like everything you get is called legendary thrill <laughs> legendary oh, thrill Act 2, clearing out the Tombs of Tal Rasha, um, Arcane Sanctuary. I feel like it had the most change of... Um, I know it sounds bad, but I feel like it had the most change of scenery. Like the Arcane Sanctuary, there's no other place in the entire game that looks like that. Um, you have the Jailer Tombs, or the Jailer Place. You obviously have the multiple tombs in the desert, but then you have the Maggot Layer too. I hate so the I'm Arcane like, Sanctuary, though. You, you, fight a, you fight a dude in a bathrobe. Like, that's exact. That's all I feel. You know who he is, right? The summoner? I, I, I am... The, um... JD, you are the lore guy when it comes to these games, man. So, 
All right, Blood Raven is the rogue from the first Diablo, and the Summoner is the wizard. Let Don't me you just find... make sure I said that <laughs> right. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, oh, so why you why why, why you fact check? Uh, I'd have to co-sign. I, I I you know I'm not gonna lie. I can't really think of a game that impacted me. Um, yes, I, get... I was right. His name is Jazareth. I must say, isn't Jazareth? Isn't the first act of Diablo two? You have to go fight Blood Raven, and he's a he's a weak cemetery r rise from the grave. <laughs> Yeah, the first act of, of yeah. Diablo 2, so what? 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 What's, what, are you, what are you talking about? What's your point? Blood Raven's trash. Yeah, but Blood Raven was the rogue. You know why Blood Raven's trash. I mean, they all... <laughs> <laughs> so you were not slot about that shit, dude. <laughs> you're trash, bro. You're you, trash. You're trash. <laughs> yeah, no, they... Um, so apparently her story... Uh, yeah, they both fucked up bad. She's even got a real name, too. Morena, Morania. Um, she's corrupted by Andariel. Crazy stuff, right? Blows the mind. Okay, no one can be corrupted because Andariel just poisons the fuck out of you and you die. No one can be corrupted. Uh, insert Prince Aiden slams that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's uh, not to not to say you steered me in, in a direction, but I'd have to co-sign. Uh, I just got back into PC gaming. Um, with my new tower. I've been streaming a while, but it's been mobile games predominantly. Um, we have Diablo 2. Diablo 3 would also fit that scope. But I, I honestly, last year, the end of last year and this and this year has been like the year of back to, not land, but couch, uh, couch multiplayer. Like, I just enjoy not playing like Overwatch, I don't play League of Legends, so I don't get to have a Discord group of like ten people. But like you referred to, having six people, we haven't done that yet. But we, I think with the max we play with uh, is four. But we play yeah. with four people. I don't know. It, that, we had a uh, camper though, huh? We had a camper though. Yeah, we had a, we had a <laughs> meal, a meal. But yeah, I know Diablo two. I think Diablo two would be a great. Uh, it brought back a lot of memories. Um, <clears throat> we got to hang out and talk a lot. I, I'm the one that ruined the third run. Because my sorceress went no! decided, dude. That was uh, that. I'm sure the Twitch clip still exists. My sorceress, my cold sore, got absolutely clapped in that dungeon by yourself. Why did you go there? I was perfectly. I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm to this protection. day, man. I still feel like I was. I was at a safe distance. I feel like I was. I was still getting the buffs. They pushed me in the fucking corner. They wouldn't let me out. I cried for all of you, and I died. I left yeah, okay. the stream. I, dude, I was genuinely. I was back murdered. at town. <laughs> and then no, like, Cornus was there. Cornus was there. What does this button do? <laughs> yeah. No, from my perspective, all I saw was just your health go like. I on it. Yeah, you can, yeah. You, yeah. With, with your companion health, I think you can only see like, one hundred percent, twenty five, seventy five, and then two percent. I was like, oh no. Oh no! All those bail a... runs for nothing. God, man. But it was fun. <laughs> Memories. We enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, was yeah. there another question? Yes. Question number two: Are there any games that you regret buying or playing? Uh, Fallout seventy six, Guitar That's Hero, that... Aerosmith. <laughs> um... <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I man. think I might have one. Hold on. I want right to get. In front of... I want to get one more. I want to get one more game that I regret. There's so many. Oh my gosh. There's so many, like, B-list games I can think of that I. Fallout 76 is the most recent one that I. I even played that on stream and was like, man, I don't think people give this enough credit. And then I even played multiplayer. And yeah. looking back at what three, four New Vegas did, I was like, this is trash. Um, I can't even play New Vegas anymore, to be honest. Oh. Um, I'm I'm so used to to four at this point. Like mm -hmm. New Vegas doesn't have enough of those sort of minute things anymore for me. Look, Skyrim <laughs> here, New Vegas here. Skyrim. They get rid of the spiders. I, I might yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's it's unfortunate. But if I if I don't just because this covers you know just like we talked about before, any of these questions we want you to guys we want you guys to ask us questions. If right. the questions become. Uh, <laughs> prevalent and everyone wants us to answer them then we might do a separate q a for it um but you know answering these one or two pretty cool um but we go into we go we're not brief about anything we go into we go into we're not we're brief going about for the anything. gold sucker <laughs> we're not brief about anything 
So if I were yeah. just the uh, Fallout 76 is the recent. That's the. I bought the special edition. I was geeked up. I talked it up on stream. I like posted it's about nice it. Up, I, I like I did everything positive, and then all the videos started coming out about how they treated their. Uh, for anyone that bought the special deluxe armor edition, the it was terrible, dude. It's a bad game. So I, I was pissed. Pewed. What about you? Um, well, I've got them right in front of me, actually. So them? It's a fucking series? First game that I regret... We're going in reverse order here. Uh, and I'm going for most recent is... Uh, if you can read it. <laughs> oh, man. I do I, not... I, I Yeah. It's not that the game is bad. It's just it took me up until halfway through the game where I was like, can you stop talking about people's fucking hearts and the light inside of it? Like, I'm getting sick of this shit. Like, the only highlights really were, like, towards the end of the game where you, all the... Well, without spoiling it, there's a lot of, um... I wouldn't say resolution. There's just a lot of conflict that's going on. You're like, oh, well, now I get to deal with this or I get to deal with that. Oh, who do I help out kind of thing. That's, like, neat, but... No. <laughs> no. I... I... I genuinely after i beat it i was just like oh the ending song's cool all right moving on <laughs> and that was kind of it like it, i i didn't even care i played it on proud mode um i got the secret ending and then i was just like don't even know what this means looked up a couple youtube videos on it and then i was like all right i'm done and that was it and you i know, have no intentions of ever touching this again you know when you play dark souls or any soulsborne game and you get done you're like man i want to find out more of the lore i'm, I'm interested let me find out it's it's motivation to get onto YouTube. When I yeah. beat Kingdom Hearts 3, or when I saw my wife beat Kingdom Hearts 3, because I didn't beat it, I got the Toy Story, and my wife got ahead of me, and I was like, okay. <laughs> it's the type of game that you, you get done with it, and you're still like, what the fuck? Right. I have to go feel it. Here. It's like you an itch. So many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... it's a disappointing game. I mean, it's it, again, it's not to say that it sucks. It's going to fit an audience. It's just not us. It's disappointing, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. And then, uh, if we're still going in reverse order, <laughs> Soul Calibur four. Nani? Five, six, it's six. Come on, you're a Final Fantasy six. fan, dude. This game. Learn your gnome and room a little. <laughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, this game, and it's not to crap on it or other people that play it. It's just the fact of the matter is, it's like when I started playing this game, I was just like, Dead or Alive wasn't out yet. You know, I'm more of a Dead or Alive fan. If, if. Truth be told, if Virtual Fighter dropped another one, I'd be playing that. And if that were at Evo, that would be the only game I'd play. So I love Virtual Fighter. But, <clears throat> and just about all the characters are unique. It's refreshing. You know, it's balanced as hell. Like, that's, that's, that's some shit right there. But I was, I was actually looking forward to this. I was like, Raphael's back. That's cool. Um, oh, Geralt's in it. Plus, you know, I might actually like this one. And then I kept playing, and I was just like... I don't see it at all. And then my brother, my brother was doing what you did on Fallout, where he's just like, "Come on, man, it's a great game, it's a great game." It's like, dude, everybody's playing it. It's not even. A, <laughs> it's not even a. I don't think it's an, uh, in Eva. Um, not to say that means it's a good yeah, or a bad game. That's the gold game. standard, yeah. Let's be honest, Samurai Showdown is a Evo, and I have no not interest. Not even released out. <laughs> yeah, it's not even out. Not as Mortal Kombat, but you know, soon. Uh, but. All, like with with all that in mind, I'd say probably the worst game ever that I got was, uh, you know, that Van Helsing game. That the Diablo free one. Style. Yeah, I regret <laughs> downloading it, and it was free. <laughs> hold on, I, I felt terrible because that, that game. game didn't come out free. Like, I, it was it was just <laughs> Xbox and PS4 yeah. Plus. That game, yeah, I, really? put, I fucking hate that game because I ended up I ended up spending money to get the other uh, jobs just because I was like. This can't be it. And I forgot the class I played. I think I played, like, the Ranger or something like that. I didn't play the guy that had the, the Van Helsing with the sword and the gun. I think I only had a gun. So there's two Van Helsings. There was one that was a Diablo-style rogue or rogue-style yeah. Diablo. And there's a second one that was a trap-based RTS. It was not the trap-based uh, RTS. It was the first one. I'm we should, look honestly, we could, we could dedicate an entire podcast <laughs> until just talking <laughs> about shitty games and then probably get in a lot of trouble for it. Of Van Hel <laughs> Shark Boy and Lava Girl, uh, Dude, Shark Boy Lava Girl, man, that's it, that's film at its finest. The Incredible Adventures. It it has a nine out of ten on Steam, and I'm like, what are y'all smoking, dude? This game, 
Yeah, I've never been pissed off at a game. I, I, I as much as I can't co sign. I like that game. It, dude, it's the it. now it's not just the adventures or the story or the you no, know, it's the incredible. The game already knows what it's given out. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go up it. Uh but yeah, I mean those are the ones I could think of. I don't know if you had anything else. No, uh, no, like I said, that that's that. that's a whole long conversation. In recent memory, Fall seventy six, shoot I I can't. I don't even care to watch it. I'm I'm so upset with 76 that I, as a Fallout buying uh, Pit Boy fan, <laughs> points to Naruto. Yeah, <laughs> I, as a Fallout fan, Kakasi, Kakasi, <laughs> Kakasi. <laughs> um, I, I'm so disappointed that I'm hesitant for the next one mm. because there's still, still I, again, it's not my cup of tea. But since it's not, since this multiplayer thing took over. It makes me nervous for the next one. I'm super excited for Borderlands, but anyway, Fallout 76. Mm. <laughs> All right, and then third question in this case. If you could move anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? I already know your answer. What is it? <laughs> I mean, you know, you could turn around <laughs> if you want. Obviously, Daddy? it's Konoha. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you, you moved to Japan. <laughs> the confidence <laughs> was, was worth it. <laughs> I would absolutely move to Japan. Yeah, that's the that's the one place I would want to. If yeah, number one, um, I don't know where in Japan. I, I assume Tokyo, but um, expensive as fuck, dude. I just well, that's like going to Cali. Japan has every any and everything that I want. It's like it's got the food, the the culture, uh, the video games. It's kind of like being here in Vegas. I love the MMA. Say it again. The environment, you know. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. Just walk exactly. Around. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, man, I, I would, you know, I could do some jujitsu over there. Who knows? There what you about go. you? <laughs> you mean ninjutsu, buddy? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> honestly, I'd probably say, um, I'd probably say Japan, but I'd also say Korea uh, because I do like a lot of Korean culture and whatnot. That's it. Anyway, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'd probably move I thought there was an elaboration because we're gonna go if, see BTS. In two weeks, we are. so that's but South Korea, Korea, and he's gonna come out a little bit more, buddy. Yeah, right. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, nah, probably not. That'll be uh, that'll be your misses. <laughs> Just oh my god, dude, yeah, it's Hyun Kwan or something. We are, <laughs> we no, it's RM man, Rat Monster. That's that, that's the one Oops. we co-signed. We're going to go see BTS in two weeks. Oh, uh, Cali, JD's gonna come out here to Vegas. We're gonna chill, watch some Kuroko's basketball. We're heading out there. Because, and we're gonna make JD a part. And I know you're, I know you're a marine, but we're going to. You're gonna be a part of what's called the army. What are you talking about? That's what the BTS fans are called. They're called the army. <laughs> That's fucking scary, dude. <laughs> dude, they <We've> mobilized. <laughs> like, yeah. Ah, Fall out. Like it's, yeah. dude. It's terrifying, man. Like just watching videos of them. It is not a game. Are they going to be... And now, here's the thing, though. Their concerts are more organized than ours are, though. You know, everyone's sectioned off and stuff like that. Just like Japan, where they're like, all right, you sit here, you're here, you're here. doesn't get that crazy. Okay. I don't know. I doubt they're going to do that here. They're like, what are these fucking gates for? Dude, Why am yeah, I locked yeah. in here? I'm, sh I'm sure Americans will trample. Yeah. So, but hopefully uh, we don't embarrass ourselves. <laughs> Dude, I will be uh... one of the only Caucasians Millie rocking. <laughs> hey, I'll look like it. <laughs> so I'll be like, Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> How does he do it, Steve? I don't know. <laughs> Who wants uh, some spaghetti? I'm cooking it it's in like the pot. Is like a mixer, huh? Oh, don't... sorry, I just dropped in. Oh my god. Hey, is so... that you over there, Steve? Hey, hey. <laughs> Shut up, dude. I know what that's from. Hey, can I take something and just take a? Okay. Yeah, that's from anyway. Trey Kennedy. I'm not gonna okay. like. Yeah, Trey Kennedy's amazing. So. Anyway. <laughs> All that being said, wait, wait. All that being, I I kind of feel like you're right here, dude. Does that feel weird? They, <laughs> do you, like, they don't bro, know. Tell me about it. It's like Let's we actually do the podcast cut like this. Yeah. So all right. So we're, yeah. Come here, dog. <laughs> Shut up, dude. Uh. Oh my bad. Oh my bad, dog. <laughs> so let's talk. Let's talk business. Business. Um. So obviously this is about a week or two. Uh, old at this point, but it's still something that we've, um, like in passing, like we passed each other in the hall and been like, "Hey, um, difficulty, difficulty in gaming." Uh, with the launch of Sekiro, I feel like it's every time Miyazaki does a 
a new game, they're like, oh, game should be difficult, or this game's hard, or whatever the case is. Um, there's a huge stint of people going, this is the Dark Souls of blank. Um, because apparently Dark Souls set the world on fire with difficulty and just redefined it for the world or whatever the case is. Um, <clears throat> so that sort of begs the question, um, at this point, between me and you and whatnot, because we've beaten, we've beaten every Souls game. Beaten Sekiro. Yep. Wait, you haven't beat, you haven't beat Demon Souls. I've never beat Demon Souls. I'm, you're not missing anything? <laughs> if you uh, want to yeah, go down I, that road? No. Mm -mm. I'm good. <laughs> but... It's really just like, it's the best way to play it. It's like Devil May Cry when you have Devil May Cry 5. You're like, you could play the first Devil May Cry, but we've developed a what lot. What are you really missing? Yeah, that's a, that's, a, yeah. that's a good analogy. So there's a, there's differences. But uh, for the first question really is what defines difficulty for you? What do you, what, or challenge, I should say, challenge. Uh, skill driven. So like, um, uh, bringing up the comparison of Sekiro, uh, uh, I'll, I'll do a mobile game reference. So, like, when I play Brave Exvius, <clears throat> uh, the difficulty is based on the boss, not by your skill. It's based on the skills that you have and RNG. There's, a, there's other mechanics that are thrown into it. There's another game I used to play called Dragelli Lost. It wasn't 100% based on skill and equipment. It had a heavy burden from that. But you, as the as the user, had to move the character, had to press and hold for the skills. <clears throat> you had to uh, tap and roll. So the artificial difficulty, which I'm sure we'll get into, uh, but it's uh, what I think. It, what I think the threshold for what's difficult is the amount of skill you need. We played Bloodborne, and you it was on stream. You went past everything, beat the first axe guy, and then got to the Bloodstar Beast in what three minutes. And I was stuck on the axe guy because my body and all, my body and mind is so used to Sekiro and uh, tapping L um, that I had to relearn the game. But the game gave me e every single tool. I you could beat the game without leveling up, without gearing anything. You could beat the game as is. So the skill gap, you knowing what the enemy does to how to. I mean, you could take the long path and say exploit of like yeah, glitching or whatnot but uh skill driven skill driven game it, the the more skill the game requires uh the less hands-on uh the game can be with you so like i said look back at ninja gaiden uh ninja gaiden you got abilities uh but that was the that was it you didn't get any more hp uh the, I think, huh it was the yeah, grew seven uh it was the sacred uh what's it called seven sacred whatever things we're talking it looked like a, a neck no not nes okay I was i'm sorry about ninja guy and i'm thinking yeah yeah, yeah you're right yeah yeah <coughs> so the nes version that's, but that's, yeah yeah like because like, we used to say i mean i don't know if it's the millennial generation but we used to say man that game's hard like is it like ninja gaiden hard i mean even xbox version could take that mantle but going back to xbox ps2 days you could say, man, is this game this game is as difficult as Ninja Gaiden from NES, and you're like, that drew that drew a picture in your head. So, uh, in Ninja Gaiden, you didn't get that much stuff. The game gave you very little, and you had to accomplish it. Again, Sekiro follows that same path of same weapon. Uh, you just get, and this time you get a shit ton of abilities. But again, from the core mechanics, it's a hundred percent based on your skills. So, yeah, it's not really like any of those abilities are. The defining like this is the best ability to have kind yeah. of thing at least right now anyway um same for the prosthetics i feel it's just like yeah you can have these prosthetics but how much is it really gonna you know do for you some of them are really good though yeah uh but yeah that's yeah it, it's you level up when the game tells you to level up yep. pretty much too you can't just go oh man i'll come back and grind it out that was what a lot of people were saying was so hard about sekiro obviously kotaku a bunch of other people uh, Forbes, I think, was the first person that did it, and I was just like, what the fuck? Where they're just talking about, hey, man, you know, Sekiro shouldn't be this hard, and I'm like, I feel like this is the reviewer just ranting because he's upset that he can't meet the deadline to put up a review yeah. for the game uh, in that case. Um, <clears throat> the Kotaku article uh, made mention of accessibility in games, uh, and should they be, should hard games be accessible, and what defines accessibility? Now, the example they used seemed to focus more on 
uh, physical disability or something that could like one example they said someone was couldn't press buttons rapidly because it like like messed up their hand or something like that and i'm not gonna challenge whatever i guess struggle that you have in that regard but i kind of feel like accessibility in a hard game is sort of a uh oxymoron sort of in the sense of well you want it to be difficult you want to be rewarded for what you do well why am i giving you all of these sort of like advantages then in the case in that case yeah. like uh you look at someone like Brawly Legs, for instance, or Broly Legs, he plays a game with his face for Street Fighter uh, Five, and he's very competitive. I mean, he hasn't won Evo or anything like that, yeah. but he's very competitive. He's a guy that's like, oh, crap, I'm fighting Broly. I'm probably going to, yeah. you know, get wrecked pretty bad, you know, in that case. Take that out. <clears throat> but, I mean, I guess that, that with all that stuff in mind, you know, what would you say is the hardest game that you've ever played through? Not. Let me preface. Don't say something like "I want to be the guy." Or the yeah, guy yeah. The game. Uh, because you know. those are just like. <clears throat> uh, no, no, no. So like, uh, uh, Sekiro comes to mind a lot only because I played it on stream, and it's a different. It's a different sensation when you're streaming for people, uh, because you're being judged a lot. Uh, you know, playing high level competitive gaming. Uh, like any, it's like, why did you dodge that? I know, yeah. Like, come on, come on, Cloud. You do. Come on, Cloud. You you don't know how to block, but you have a bloodborne tattoo and you die. Um, secure, secure comes to mind. Um, there's other games too with artificial difficulty uh, that has nothing to do with the actual skill gap. Rather, uh, looking at a game like Destiny, where if they, if you hit a certain threshold. Or even Anthem. If you hit a certain threshold, the game gets difficult because exclusively to gear. And the, the game is, you can't reach the next echelon strictly because of gear. Um, but Sekiro comes to my mind. A, a lot of that, I think, is coming from streaming it. Um, if I were to, I'm trying to, I mean, Dark Souls 1 was my first introduction into the series. Um, uh, Ninja Gaiden uh, was extremely difficult. Uh, again, my mind always races to action adventure games before any other game. Um, I can't think of any puzzle game that had me flustered. Um, <laughs> about, yeah, uh, fucking any about, Soulsborne game, man. What about Killer Instinct? <laughs> the hardest difficulty wasn't that difficult. Oh my God, no! Backpedal, Guilty Gear. Uh, trying to uh, when you fight Golden Dizzy. I remember that oh, as a kid. Yeah. Your normal soul is it? Yes, yeah. Or, or is you it, gold soul? Your no, your normal soul, but you have twenty five. Like it's it's literally one hit, and I still <laughs> never beat it. Yeah, yeah. No, I was fucked. Yeah, that is my worst yeah. gaming moment. If I had a big one, and you know, shout out to Guilty Gear coming out on Epic Seven, but that was uh, I get that hundred percent artificial difficulty. At no point beating that did I feel more resourceful in my skill level. I just went well, RNG. Praise be the Jesus. What about you? What, yeah. what, what, I'm, what's your hardest game? <laughs> Honestly, it's a game I haven't even beat yet. Uh, it's uh, Divinity. Have you ever tried playing Divinity on Tactical? Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. It's fucking unforgiving. Is that that, it, that's that, that's that multiplayer game you're playing with, um, with your crew? Edge, yeah. It's a tactics game, yeah. It's a very good game, and you can play the entire game through um, <clears throat> in a tactics format, and you can exploit the brick out of the game like you can literally teleport a boss into like a jail cell that's like really hard to kill and then beat the the ads and then i don't know throw a barrel and they're burning like you can legit do that the game lets you do that but they say because we're letting you do this we're also going to screw you over if you're fighting bosses and other stuff too like there's a lot of like uh what are they called lone lone wolf builds so it'll just be only two characters uh, that they that they have and you get lone wolf and it's like super you're super powerful and all that other stuff and they'll be like fighting the craziest mobs that i could never fight on the hardest difficulty i think it's tactician or something like that but i just can't beat it you know it's hard for me to get in that mindset i feel like i have to reset my characters try again every five seconds is it's that, a hard game is that so wait so you say the word exploit and i brought that up <clears throat> So the game's difficult because there's so much accessibility. So like, you as a character can warp a boss into a prison cell, is imaginative. So that's why the game's so difficult. Like the bosses, 
It's got extra buffs. They defense. do that stuff too. Yeah, they do that stuff too. Like it's literally gotten to the point where I was like, I literally, so you can split your team up. I'll split my team up and have them attack here. And then I'll have my other team literally while they're frozen, you know, in combat because no one moves until I move. They're frozen in combat. I'll sneak my other two guys to get advantageous up here and just start nuking the hell out of people to try and speed up the is boss. That they, that's, not, that's not how they throw their spells in the game? <laughs> Think that! Yes! <laughs> zap, zap, zap! You're full <laughs> fireballs. Flap, flap. But there's all these other things you have to keep in mind, like that. That if you if water hits the ground, for instance, and then you just you're like, oh, ice spell. You can freeze that place, for, so when people run through it, they have a chance of slipping. Or you can turn it uh, electric, and then when people walk onto it, they get shocked and stunned for their turn. Like, it's ridiculous. Everything you have to keep track. I love the game. It's a great game. But asking me to beat it on on that difficulty. It's just, it's a nightmare. Yeah, dude. I mean, there's so many layers to what, you're, what we're talking about for difficulty. Because we didn't, yeah. I mean, I didn't even think of RTSs. Uh, Age of Empires, I got frustrated and said, fuck it, Big Daddy and Woodstock. So I got a cop car and unlimited wood. And that gold yeah. digger got me the, all the gold. So, like, yeah, the, I mean, there's layers to that conversation. But like I said, the, the artificial difficulty, skill to artificial difficulty, <laughs> you know, like, the boss will remain the same, but you are given a toothpick and toothpaste to figure it out as opposed to here is everything here is legendary top tier gear however we're buffing the boss now have yeah. fun we're buffing the boss again even the slightest thing diablo 2 which we love uh diablo 2 is easy no problem at all no issue you have fun you die come pick up your corpse pvp huh ggs you sw you press that check mark button nothing changes except for it's the exact same game Except for you cannot uh, get revived. I mean, there's a bonus, I believe, to rare gear and runes. Uh, but aside... Be... Pardon yeah, me? No, no. I think you have to be ladder to do that. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you could just be hardcore itself. I think you'd be hardcore. I'm, I think you'd be hard. I think ladder came out after Diablo 2 got released. But I... but in any case... Either way. Yeah, yeah. You Again, a simple checkmark button it turns the game upside down. Permadeath. Permadeath is always a, a scary, very scary thing. But again, that, I mean, uh, you know, uh, definition, is that artificial or is that not artificial? Because it's, you know, uh, it's it's up to the user. Yeah. And fighting multiple to, listen, targets. <laughs> listen, has any, anyone else showed up in the screen? No. <laughs> no, I hear you on that. I, it's like the same thing for like uh, God Hand. God Hand has the, the dynamic difficulty system. And when you're playing, when you're doing really well, it turns up to level four, I believe, which is die. If you play it on hard mode, you stay and die. But the only difference is it teaches you to look behind you a lot and to know where everyone's at and to optimize your combos. So there's a bit of a, we're pushing something yeah. that's gonna make you a better player overall, uh, difficulty-wise, which I consider more of true difficulty. You know? So, I mean, either way, difficulty is difficulty. Games are fucking hard, man. Yeah, man, just, life's hard. <laughs> it's, it's just Ain't gonna happen. Right. This is the real yeah. podcast. Yeah, right. Welcome. So um, <clears throat> the other uh, sort of big, I don't know if it was really all that. Well, no, it was big, actually, was the uh, the burning of the, uh, I always say it wrong, the Notre Dame um, got lit on fire. I don't know specifically what caused it. Um, uh, if I remember, I can't say the credible source, but I believe it was an electrical issue. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, there was a, a whole bunch of, I mean, donations came flooding in. But uh, the uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember his specific title, but he was the VP of like public relations, specifically for like fundraisers and donations. He was, lack of a better term, upset. He's like, I can't. If this much of outpour and love would have came sooner, we could have saved it because the infrastructure was terrible. Yeah, dude, it was like it was like call to arms, like. He's like, thanks, but listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we appreciate it. You know, God bless, yada, yada. But at the same time, like, I mean, that's a whole nother can of worms I don't want to get into. But typically, people don't want to get involved until it's too late. Yeah. Which is what he was kind of saying. But anyway. <clears throat> Next point. Well, guess who else got involved? Ubisoft, who donated, I believe, half a million. is like 5,600. Or, no. <laughs> 500 and like 60,000 and some some change 
uh, to uh, a couple cents. To the re relief effort yeah. uh, to support the um, history, really. You know, Assassin's Creed, it makes sense coming from... Which one? Which Assassin's Creed? Was that Unity? Unity. Yeah, so... <clears throat> which I'm glad you mentioned. Uh, because, obviously, I don't know if Ubisoft made a big deal about it. I'd have to check. But people found out about it, and it became a sort of, like, discussion where they're like, hey, look what Ubisoft's doing. Oh, man, that's great. And it sort of brought up that, that question. And, and this is kind of funny because, what, three years ago, Ubisoft, or four years ago, Ubisoft was like, shit, according to people. And they're just like, oh, it's garbage. All you got to do is turn out the same Assassin's Creed games. Because yeah. I don't even think uh, What's Call was out then. Origins was out. They are pumping <laughs> them out every year, though. Yeah. Yeah, they were pumping them out, man. And uh, so the last one before they pumped them out like that, I believe, was Unity. Was it? No, it was Syndicate. Uh, it goes Uni Unity Syndicate, then they started uh, doing two-year uh, gaps. Two, yep. And Unity was the one that they were pumping up the most because they're like, you can go in and out of, you know, uh, interior buildings, which was really just a cut, a glorified cutscene. Uh, and then, <laughs> and hype that like, shit hey. up, B. <laughs> yeah, it's like this is next gen. This is gonna be for you know. You could see how many people you know during the French, uh, the French Revolution, just like ran around and stuff. Isn't that crazy? And I was just like, okay, I sure. can't move I mean, my right character. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Wow, this is great. It's a cutscene. <laughs> yeah. So why does he have no skin? Uh, there's, there's a lot of that stuff. So uh, apparently. Uh, gamers took this as, you know what, hey, this is a good move. Let's go on to, you know, websites for this game and start uh, review praising it or whatever they want to call it. The opposite of review bombing. And they just sent, like, mad likes and all that stuff on Unity for it. And they're like, like, I was reading some of the comments actually uh, yesterday, and they're going, didn't play the game, but I really appreciate what you guys did. Yeah, shout out to, and shout out like, to Ubisoft. Yeah, <laughs> Ubisoft. Yeah, this uh, this Ubifost is really cool, man. I like them. Yeah, man. <laughs> they're like they're better than that devil EA, you know. And and that was that sort of. <laughs> I hate ya. <laughs> I hate ya. Capcom. They're all right. <laughs> oh man. What about soft bread? <laughs> you know, it's Eunice. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> or soft bread or French bread? Uh, I forget. Uh, they, my they, favorite is French toast, but. <laughs> they make it, uh, good I've heard it both uh, ways. So, uh, that sort of, you know, <laughs> shut up, man. <laughs> I'm trying to stay focused, and you're like, <laughs> let me take some jabs in there. <laughs> um, so that sort of brought up a question. Uh, do you think that's fair? In that in that regard. Um. So, I think the fact, so, I don't know how much they hype themselves up to the public about it. So it's one thing to go on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't have the facts for it, but um, if I'm basing this off a individual who's ill-informed, yeah. um, if if it turns out that Ubisoft was like, you know what, hey guys, hey everyone, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, we're, we need someone to come here uh, from New York Times, Forbes, Kotaku, IGN, everywhere. Hey guys. Guess what we're doing? We are going to help rebuild because we are a great company. That like that seems sketchy to me because a game that did so terribly. I mean, no matter how you go about it, it's positive. However, if it was just like a Twitter post and then someone else found out about it, um, and then other magazines without you know talking was like, hey, this is kind of a big deal, guys. It was hush hush, but Ubisoft is actually donating money on top of the schematics that they did. Uh, for their in-game model of the of the Notre Dame, so um, it, it goes. Add on to that, they yeah. also made Assassin's Creed Unity free. Okay, so that just sweetens the deal. So you tell me that right now, as an ill-informed person, I think that's amazing. It makes the company look really good. They're coming out all spades. It's not. It's not like. <laughs> it... Yeah, read them and weep, boy. Yeah, <laughs> is that a flesh yeah. or a full health? Yeah, he's like I fold. Activision. <laughs> I fold. No, that's that's awesome, man. Like, there's no again. The only negative thing is I could say about it was, or could say is if it was like weird flex, but okay. If they were spitting it out like the heavens, like, hey guys, look at us, look, look what we're doing. We're doing this. I don't like that. That's showboating. 
Um, mm-hmm. But keeping it hush hush and letting other people talk about your great deeds uh, just makes you look better. So people that have not played the game, uh, people that have never heard of the company, that are from different countries, different religious faiths, coming together to send positivity to one organization, giving more, literally giving back. Because I, I, I'm sure if you YouTube or you Google any documents, they didn't do the Notre Dame had to been influenced from someone going there and then going inside and maybe talking to a person who you know cleans the facility who maintains scriptures xyz so they are in fact giving back uh they're not reaping the benefits of like i mean again ill-informed i'm not going to their website it doesn't say hey we're doing an exclusive uh deal on unity you know buy it now and i mean donations go to notre dame like that's kind of like you're trying to sell your game and then give some they're completely going we've donated we've gave in-game schematics on top of here's your game well flush (laughs) i think that's great man no that's awesome Uh, you even peppering that last part actually makes me really happy that's really fucking cool yeah no i mean i like that too and i always like hearing about how uh companies are doing better obviously you hear the stuff with like Corey balrog who is i believe the lead director or lead um designer for uh or is he the director of god of war uh he's doing a lot of stuff for god of war mm-hmm. uh you hear about like like capcom capcom's on a big comeback they've done what five games now that have all been very well received mm-hmm. um and then you look at like ubisoft division two is doing better than the first division there's this move yep. it's always nice to hear about that stuff but sort of the question that gets asked is is this a proper form to vet that you know if a company is doing something good or uh contributing positively to something um why would you because that at that point now that's affecting the integrity of the quality of the game when it's got nothing to do with it doesn't have the same thing to do with the game in theory hey i want to support the company i think a a tweet about it or you know, going on their forums or something like that and being like, hey, I appreciate this is a really good move or something like that. It seems to me as a better response than let me go on the Steam and praise this game that a lot of people, you know, for good reason. It wasn't, it's pretty much considered the worst Assassin's Creed. It, well, I don't want to say pretty much, but it's clear to see faults in that game mm-hmm. compared to a lot of the other Assassin's Creed. Like, people don't co- come out of the woodwork saying, Hey, Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag sucked. A lot of people consider that to be one of the better ones. Or, you know, no one really says anything bad about Odyssey or Origins. Well, except Odyssey has nothing to do with Assassin's, but yeah. Origins is, all right, it's a change of pace. We're doing things differently, you know, like kind of a thing. And that's, <laughs> and that's okay. But like with Unity, now they're giving it these upvotes. And then you think, think about when... Uh, games like this were review bombed. Like Tomb Raider got review bombed yeah. because it went on sale like two months after the last one came out, and people were like, "That's dumb." And then blah, 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 blah. it's like, "Well, is that fair?" And people want to be like, "Well, it's not fair to me." Well, it's your money. You could have bought it now. You could have bought it later. It really doesn't yeah. matter. It was up to you. You made a purchase. Um, <clears throat> in in that regard, what mm-hmm. happens if you know I bought? I don't know. Soul Calibur, six. And uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I double check the numbers that. again. Like, the That's f- how bad it was. <laughs> which fuck, which was this? <laughs> um, I, like if I bought that game because I buy sixty bucks if I ran it, right? Yeah. And because I was like, I need a fighter, and I buy I buy this brand new. It goes on sale, you know, two weeks later. That was my choice to buy it, then, you know. Or in the case of you got the stuff going on with Borderlands with the uh, Epic Game Store and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and people are like, oh, I'm gonna downvote this to hell, and it's like, well, that that's not a proper channel to voice your um <clears throat> discontent is just to go oh well, now i hope you don't succeed because what if they what if another borderlands comes out and it's like hey yeah we're on pc now you think they're gonna forget what yeah. you guys did it's not a customer is always right sort of situation there mm-hmm. should be a bit of a i guess a gap between the the com- uh, the community and the company that's mm-hmm. uh, producing the game it shouldn't just be everything i say is right or you say is wrong um, but I don't know, man. I, I feel like this is abusing a system in a way. Like, it's not it, cool. It's great that it happened. And I looked up their Twitter thing. They weren't really showboating about it. So that's good. And they related it to the game. Yeah. So, hey, we're also giving the game out for free. Yeah, no, it's it's like a lockjaw experience like you talked about. We have people who never played the Assassin's Creed series that hear about this that are like, you know what? I'm a casual gamer. I play 
a lot of <coughs> EA games. Um, I'm gonna go to Ubisoft. I'm gonna go to their Steam. Like you see a video, you you get motivated. You're like, fuck it. They go to the Ubisoft. They go to Unity. They upvote it. They say this game is great. I've never, I've never played a game with such great detail. Um, and then the next person who comes behind them also says the same thing. And then it finally gets to someone who hasn't played. Not that Unity is a game that someone is looking back going have you guys heard of unity but um it'll uh Holy shit. It, it, it sets the company it, it might set the company up to look bad at the next go around so uh on the next game so what if they decide to do a future assassin's creed or another black flag where it's on the seas and it's uh you know like it's somewhere in i don't know it's only in the sea whatever uh the point is it, it might set up the company to with high expectations uh because of the positive influx of people. Because like I said, you're going to have a lot, uh, right now you're going to have a lot of people co-signing the company because of the great deed they did. They did, but it's ultimately up to the consumer like you said. It's up to the individual themselves to stay informed. Wait for the reviews, trust the reviews. Um, but it, I do believe yeah, that is the wrong way. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example for myself. If Ubisoft did something, I, I would help try hopefully track down a donation link uh, that they were providing with Notre Dame. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Be, yeah, that, I, I would I would say like, hey, yeah, if you want to continue or if you want to support, here's the proper channel. For yeah. I mean, you've only got so many characters that you can put on a tweet. I'm sure they wanted to do it in one tweet. Yeah, not like, hey, by the way, in addition to the good stuff we're doing, here's how you donate. Kind yeah, of. exactly. Yeah, and again, problem. yeah, talk just small things. They didn't floss. Oh, donation. It was again. It's it's been silent. It's been. Hey guys, we're providing this. Uh, make sure you donate to your local XYZ. Like that's that's so that's uh, it makes me feel good, man. It's like a crazy good feel story that I'm gonna tell other people next week. I didn't know it was the Unity was for free. Like that's awesome. That's multiplayer. I mean, we could we could get it and play. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, we got to talk about Sniper Three. But oh, that's right. Uh, that is the last uh, major topic I had. Though, so I Sniper Three. You. <laughs> what are we supposed to be doing that though dude uh so okay <clears throat> for anyone out backlog. Uh, yeah yeah if any for anyone out there that's interested in the live streams um uh, definitely need to know in youtube comments below if you guys i'll probably bring this up for the next few months just because these are the beginning videos and not too many people are going to see them uh but definitely want to know if you guys want to see uploads to youtube uh, of our gameplay but uh we're playing bloodborne still we're getting the itch to go back in diablo 2 that's been a huge goal I would co-sign and say JD's as well, but it's been a huge goal of mine oh, to, yeah. to be. I've never beaten Diablo 2 in hardcore from start to finish, ever, yeah. in my entire life. And, and what we mean by start to finish, it's not just going through Acts 1 through 5. It's beating it on hell. Yes, correct. Yes. Acts 1 through 5. Yes. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. Uh, so, so yeah, because yeah. some people are like, losers. You didn't yeah, beat so. it. All you need to be is level 32. I beat the ancient to 25. Yeah, um, <laughs> but also Sniper Elite is, is one of those ones that we actually... Um, you have it, and I think I bought it too, or it was free on PSN or something like that. We were playing it on controllers, and I was like, this is so fucking hard for me. It's, to it's stiff. So we now have it on PC. Much better avenue for us to, you know, get the windage. And yeah, that's – I inherently think I'm a sniper, so any game that I play <laughs> – any game that I – look, I have a pretty good shot. Fuck you, JD. <laughs> I have a pretty good shot. I – like, okay, look. I'm talking – I'm looking right at the camera, okay? I'm a pretty good shot, okay? Um, listen, when I activate my showering gun, I can see everything. Um, I think Sniper 3 – I think Sniper 3 would be kind of like a uh, like a chill and play kind of thing. Uh, yeah. We're not taking it too seriously. Maybe doing funny voiceovers or shit that's going on. Um uh, I definitely, I mean, the Bloodborne playthrough, we only played once. Uh, this week's been weird for me. My family came in town. Next week's weird. I'm going to Level Up Expo. That's out here in Las Vegas. Next next week, we're going to uh, the BTS concert. So uh, these we few months. Some... We should do something. We'll have time Saturday, won't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, Friday night, you come down. We're going to hang out. Saturday, I, we're, sa <laughs> so two weeks from now. Uh, let me mark my calendar real quick uh, for everyone out there. Uh, we'll have another podcast out, but next next friday oh i'm sorry saturday so the fourth uh yeah. so the fourth of may jd will be in in seat ass in seat um will we will more than likely do some uh final fantasy and epic seven playthrough um yeah. and then who knows maybe we do a horror game something fun 
Maybe I get the VR. What came out on VR? Maybe I can get VR. I want to play a horror game on VR. I love Wait, fucking VR. But you don't have PSVR, do you? No, it'd be Steam. Um, but anyway, yeah, two weeks from now, JD will be S and C. Well, yeah, we're we'll definitely gonna do something. We'll, we'll uh, absolutely do a. I think we should. I mean, with only two of us, it wouldn't be as fun. But maybe we'll try to do it like a funhouse thing where uh, you play a game and I'll do commentary in the background. Then we'll switch off every thirty minutes. But try to conduct a normal podcast. You know what I mean? Or we can have. <laughs> Dude. I feel like it's a missed opportunity that your wife, that I wasn't over when your wife was playing Kingdom Hearts, because I bet you anything she's probably cursing at the screen. She she was, but if I put on the camera, it's going to be a dead stare. Uh -huh, that's funny. <laughs> ha! Huh. Yeah, I get it. Thanks, I get it. Thanks for the phone. <laughs> we'll, figure, um, we'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll figure out. something out, but uh, but anyway, yeah, the Sniper Elite 3, oh, honestly. Maybe dead Space. That was another one. Pardon me? Because we didn't. We didn't beat Dead Space on the hardest difficulty. No, no, Dead, yeah, Dead, Dead Space is backlogged after Diablo 2. <laughs> no, yeah, it's if, super fun. If, if, super if fun. me and you did not, if this was, if YouTube and Twitch, perfect life, I could be, have my bachelor's in sports and health sciences, I could be a successful Twitch and YouTuber, as well as you, JD, who has a Twitch channel and a YouTube channel. Um, once we, perfect world. Uh, we would be able to play games and record it the entire time with each other. But unfortunately, we both have full-time jobs. Uh, we love each other deeply. States. So, um, yeah. uh, It's tough for us just to be able to pepper all these games, and so I like to stay consistent. So uh, hopefully next week, uh, I'd like to play Bloodborne, honestly, uh, Tuesday and Friday. Um, because Saturday I'm gone. I can't play Tuesdays. Okay, well. Uh, no, I, can't, I actually, can't play Friday. I can't play Wednesday. <laughs> So we we'll shoot. Fuck what, it. Monday? Let's just shoot for tomorrow. Oh okay, yeah. We we'll shoot for we'll sh after the gym. We'll shoot for tomorrow. Shoot for tomorrow. Hey, yeah, you shoot for the stars, eh? You quit like talking shit back there. <laughs> Tuesdays until uh, Evo. I've Eunice. I I play Eunice, and then this Friday I have the volunteer thing instead of the or the fundraising. What a thing. good man. Oh yeah. Wait a. Way to, co way to make yourself look worse. Hey, hey I'm Steve. volunteering. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a fundraiser. I'm, so I'm just going to go to it and attend well, and drink champagne. I now I'm bowling. <laughs> I, w I was, <laughs> was going to see that. Oh, it. man. You did. It was a good strike. Your mom or your dad. I would have invited one of them just to have a. Oh, have my a mom finger. whoops my dad's ass in bowling. My dad really. takes a fat L in that game. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Pa? Anyway, anyway, we've been off topic long enough. That's going to do it for the uh, podcast for this week. Again, I am your boy JD. This is uh, Cloud. <laughs> and the do a dab, man. Do a dab real quick. No. <laughs> I can't end the video. <laughs>